thank all the organizers. Uh, thank you for your very generous invitation, um, and uh, I've been extremely well looked after. So, Fontan revision or transplant in post Fontan patients, when and how? Um, a bit of physiology, which is, uh, I think it is important to uh, uh, understand. Uh, it can be schematized uh, very easily with the endosteric pressure of the ventricle is here. Uh, the energy is delivered by the single ventricle. This is the mean uh, aortic pressure. The energy is progressively lost across the systemic resistances. Here you have the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary resistances. So a reminder is that uh, a circulation between two capillary beds is a portal circuit. So a Fontan circulation is a portal circuit. Uh, but you also have uh, the splanchnic uh, uh, resistances uh, and here the liver. So the actual, the anatopical portal circulation is uh, de facto a portal within a portal circulation. So that's important to understand. And then uh, it doesn't play, but this normally should be a pressure volume loop, uh, which then demonstrates it out. Sorry. Uh, it's a pressure volume loop, very nice, uh, which is supposed to uh, emphasize uh, the importance of the pump function. Uh, so you need to have uh, a nice uh, systolic function, a very good diastolic function, uh, and an appropriate volume loading. Uh, which so so the everything is at stake in, in a uh, in the fontan circulation. The systolic function can be impaired uh, progressively. The diastolic function is impaired. The volume loading is inappropriate. Um, so uh, the fontan revision uh, I have uh, divided uh, and that has been all already uh, presented. Um, to the to Fontan takedown, it can be, it has to be very early in, in case uh, of uh, uh, catastrophic Fontan failure, which is obvious. It, can, it may be late uh, in weeks, or it's a late conversion to biventricular physiology in, the, in years. Um, the surgical revision, I will talk a bit more. Uh, conversion to atrial pulmonary uh, to uh, extra cardiac conduit, uh, um, that I will develop. Um, and uh, I will uh, talk a little bit of the conversion to Fontan uh, uh, with hepatic veins exclusion, which is a topic that I have worked for many years on. So the early takedowns, uh, um, so the only ways uh, is to, uh, um, in, in uh, acute Fontan failure after the surgery is to take down the Fontan or to put the pa patient on ECMO. And uh, as was emphasized by David, uh, before it is a decision that has to be made uh, within hours uh, of the Fontan. Um, elective takedown, uh, it is a matter of weeks. Uh, um, prolonged effusion uh, without uh, a demonstration of a Fontan uh, circuit obstruction uh, and with an adequate fenestration. If you have prolonged effusion uh, over uh, several weeks, uh, um, about uh, two to three weeks, um, you have to think of taking the Fontan down and uh, four, four weeks, five weeks is uh, the ultimate limit. Um, you've seen that. Um, so the Fontan revision uh, in the children's hospital protocol, uh, if you have uh, effusion that are great, longer than two weeks, we would uh, um, do a, a catheter study and if there are demonstration kinking, obstruction anywhere, or a lack of patency of the fenestration, uh, we would most of the time uh, undertake uh, a surgical revision. And here you have two patients, one with uh, a, um, a severe stenosis of the origin of the right pulmonary artery. And this uh, are the two from the same patient. Um, this is a, a severe origin of the right, uh, left pulmonary artery and a stenosis uh, at the inferior anastomosis because there is this, this combination of these two lesions, uh, uh, the revision was surgical and not uh, a, and here because it is very difficult to treat uh, uh, with uh, a balloon and stent, uh, and it was also a surgical revision. Um, now, um, more importantly, the atrial pulmonary connection conversion to the extra cardiac conduit 
associated with a maze and um, often with a, a natural pacing. Um, I put this uh, quote from this um, um, publication, Fontan Circulation and Orthopedic uh, Heart Transplantation, which says that two thirds of the Fontan patients who die or are listed for orthotopic heart transplantation have preserved ventricular function. What it means is that two thirds of the patient uh, have uh, a a defect in their fontan circuit that is potentially correctable and including a, a valve uh, uh, regurgitation. So here you have a, a characteristic atriopulmonary connection with a very dilated right atrium and severe compression uh, of the uh, uh, right uh, pulmonary veins. Uh, um, you also have a significant loss of energy and through the turbulences in the very dilated right atrium. And uh, when during the period of sinus rhythm, you have uh, the reverse flow during the atrial kick in the inferior vena cavae. So uh, what, who are the candidates for the conversion to the extra cardiac conduit? Uh, they are atrial pulmonary connection, of course, uh, uh, with a secondary fontan failure. They have been doing well initially. Um, most of the patient, the indication would be a atrial reentry tachycardia or a flutter, um, less so a natural fibrillation. I think the patient with atrial fibrillation are beyond that stage. Uh, um, before the introduction of a second antiarrhythmic agent, this is our policy uh, in, in Australia and at the children's, um, or after systematic investigation, uh, uh, patient who do not have arrhythmias, they have an investigation of the atrial pulmonary connection. They have a preserved systolic function and we demonstrate uh, an obstruction on the fontan pathway. So you can uh, uh, offer an extra cardiac conduit uh, uh, conversion rather than uh, a, 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 um, a, a stent or a, a balloon dilation. These patients have to be young, 35 years is uh, the limit. Uh, above 40, you really should not do which means that most of these patients have actually disappeared because most of the patients with atrial pulmonary connection are beyond the 35 years mark. In, in, in Australia, in Melbourne, uh, we started doing extra cardiac confrontant for every patient in 96. So this is a, uh, from the Australia and New Zealand uh, uh, Fontan Registry. Freedom from death of transplantation, the two, uh, two um, uh, groups one is a group in New Zealand uh, from uh, uh, Auckland who do the uh, correction uh, uh, early. Uh, and um, most of the unit in Australia, not too much ourselves, uh, but we had the tendency to do it a bit later. Uh, and that uh, translates into the outcome very significantly. Um, the people who really know that uh, and who have introduced this surgery is Gus Magrudis when he was in, in uh, um, in uh, uh, Chicago, um, um, a lot of patients uh, with uh, very few operative mortality um, and the freedom from arrhythmia at 80% at 15 years, 12 heart transplantations, six, uh, uh, one year or less before the, after the uh, conversion and six, uh, three years after the conversion. So freedom from death of transplantation 10 years after the conversion, which is a very good, uh, a very good operation, very good results. So, so the contraindication to this operation are very clear. Um, the age, the pump failure, uh, functional AV valve regurgitation, the PLE, uh, and the plastic bronchitis or liver dysfunction. Fenestration, uh, we have spoke about it. I will spoke a little bit about this operation that I have developed. Um, reducing the fontan pressure uh, on the liver specifically is not an idea that is very new. It was, it was introduced by Yves Lecomte uh, and uh, also by Bill Norwood, but technically it is very difficult to do and to uh, achieve a complete separation of the liver from the fontan circulation, you need to have uh, this uh, artifact uh, where we uh, exclude uh, all the small veins that drain directly into the IVC with a covered stent. Uh, and so this operation we have developed, it works very well. Uh, we have uh, 
done it for uh, three patients with uh, protein-losing enteropathy, two patients are alive without uh, uh, protein-losing enteropathy, completely cured, uh, and the follow-up is very long. It's about six years now. Uh, one patient was uh, the uh, second patient, eight years of follow-up, um, has died uh, at transplantation uh, uh, in December last year. Um, she had a very complete resolution of her PLE, and then her ventricular function uh, um, went off. Uh, she had an elevation uh, of her uh, endosteric pressure, heavy valve regurgitation, uh, and so she lost the benefit uh, of uh, the rerouting of the hepatic veins uh, and had recurrence of the PLE, together with uh, the apparition to, of uh, AV malformations. So going back to the transplantation, uh, the indication for transplant uh, are the atrial pulmonary beyond indication for conversion. So most of the atrial pulmonary connection that have uh, failed font on now will go straight for transplantation. Um, all the patients with extra cardiac fontan with pump failure, with or without uh, AV valve regurgitation. So the pump failure is a, a marker for clear, uh, uh, you, you cannot try any other um, uh, um, strategy. Um, we know that two thirds of the moderate or severe AV valve regurgitation are of functional origin. So you shouldn't aim towards uh, uh, correcting uh, the uh, uh, AV valve uh, regurgitation in this patient. PLE escaping medical treatment. So PLE respond quite well to medical treatment at the beginning. And severe plastic bronchitis. You have some patients have minor bronchi plastic bronchitis and they can live very well for a long time with uh, 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 physiotherapy and uh, uh, monitoring. So the um, Fontan transplantation uh, uh, has a very bad uh, reputation. This publication in 2009 demonstrated an increase of risk with an odd ratio of eight. Um, and that has been demonstrated in many publications. Um, this paper is very recent uh, in GTCVS in 2021 from England. And they uh, characterize uh, very well what is actually happening is that uh, um, a, a significant proportion of these uh, fontan during their transplantation have horrendous uh, intraoperative course uh, and bleed uh, enormously, which leads to an in-hospital mortality of uh, almost 30%. Uh, and that is found in other recent publications, in-hospital mortality in uh, a multi-institutional American study of 26%, um, and the meta-analysis uh, published in 2017 uh, of one-year mortality of 20%. Uh, we do not have these uh, findings, uh, and we have published uh, uh, the, our strategy. What is extremely important is that it, to understand the increased mortality in Fontan uh, transplantation uh, is a, a lack of proper organization. You really need to bring this patient in the operating room many hours before the expecting time of receiving the organs. You have to concentrate on having a very careful dissection a very meticulous hemostasis, correcting every defect that can be uh, corrected before the heart arrives. And then when the heart arrives, uh, uh, you're ready to do a, a straightforward transplantation. And when you do that, you have exactly the same odds uh, than uh, with any other patient. So the complex surgery can include uh, uh, reconstruction of the aortic arch, uh, reconstruction of the pulmonary arteries, uh, um, you have here uh, a, in a left isomerism uh, with uh, a left azygos continuation. You have uh, the native pulmonary artery is used to connect to the donor superior vena cavae. Um, uh, all these sorts of strategy which have to be planned ahead. Uh, so the surgeon who will be in charge of the transplantation, he has a map, he knows what to do. He has, uh, and doesn't, uh, it's not a matter of. Uh, devising what to do on the time of the, of the, uh, the phone call. So most of the patients nowadays have uh, assist uh, uh, before the transplant. Uh, 
uh, we uh, assisting the left side uh, um, and the systemic side, we have experience with three patients. All of them have been transplanted successfully. Uh, the right side, I told you about, uh, uh, we have one patient supported for two and a half years and she has been transplanted and, uh, and is doing very well. We have no bivada. Um, we have none of these, but you can imagine that can that is doable. So this is our smallest patient assisted. Um, the survival after the heart transplantation in uh, uh, Australia uh, is uh, not a uh, children's hospital. 34 patients have been transplanted after Fontan and the odds of survivals are very good. Um, what is not shown there on that slide is that the odd of being transplanted varies a lot from one state to another. And if you are in Victoria where the uh, adult transplant team does a lot of congenital patients. Uh, we have a very keen interest in transplanting this patient. We have very close collaboration. So most of the front-time patients that are listed in Victoria will receive an organ. Uh, whereas if you are in a different state, your odds of receiving your organ are very bad. But once uh, you have been transplanted, the, the survival rate is quite good. Um, these are statistics for the transplantation, uh, which shows that uh, uh, nowadays uh, uh, we have 80% of our patients are redo. Most of them have uh, um, a, a VAD, 50%, 56% have had a VAD, and probably the ratio of uh, congenital heart compared to uh, dilated cardiomyopathy is uh, two thirds for the dilated cardiomyopathy, uh, one third for the congenital. So in conclusion, you have to take down the acute failure and the really acute failure, you have to take it down in hours really, really quickly. Correct the front time pathway and the organic uh, AV valve regurgitation when you find some. And transplant the pump failure, the severe plastic bronchitis and PLE and get yourself really well organized to do that in a proper way.